Thank you to Rincon for sponsoring Porsche this video. I've been making TV videos, let's just say for a hot minute, uh, and it's usually been about the newest, shiniest TV tech available or coming out. But every single one of those videos, I see a comment like this. And quite honestly, you guys are right. TVs are getting way too complicated, way too expensive, and this isn't anything new. And it all really started like almost two decades ago. So, I'm sure you saw the title. Before you guys rage in the comments about LCD versus LED being the same, just, just hear me out. So every new TV that comes out, we seem to get some new like marketing term behind it. And it's kind of hard to keep up, especially if you're just looking for like, just a deal on a good TV. All the newest TVs we currently have today come from two basic kinds of TV technology, LCD and LED. So this video, I'm gonna to try to explain the difference between these two technologies in hopes this will sort of make the current landscape of TVs a lot less confusing. So we're gonna to go to the foundation of where the current TV technologies are to better understand what got us here. All right, so let's quickly go over some basic differences between LCD and LED TVs because they're more alike than you think. LCD stands for like a crystal display, while LED stands for light emitting diode. All right, so LCDs were the successor to those big, chonky boy CRT TVs and plasma TVs. And if you remember, when the first flat screen TVs came out, those were LCD TVs. I actually had one in my house. They were gigantic backlit TVs with a few filter layers and liquid crystal filter placed above usually like a lot of fluorescent bulbs. The same kind of fluorescent bulbs you might use in your lamps or kitchen lights in your house. And then like bulbs would go out, it was a pain to fix, but they were just, at the time, big TVs. And while LCDs could produce brighter and more colorful images in HD resolutions, it's like biggest flaw had to do with them bulbs. Older LCD TVs could never produce black colors. They're always some version of gray, and usually it was like super noticeable. And this is where LED stepped in. Instead of big fluorescent bulbs as a backlight, LED TVs use tiny diode arrays to shine light through the same layers and look at crystal layers as LCD TVs. I could simplify it. This allowed the light to be more evenly distributed across the panel, as well as create better, deeper blacks and higher contrast in the image. Okay, so if I could just boil everything down, this is like the meat, the heart of the video. A lot of people don't realize this. Every single TV technology you can see at Best Buy or online, aside from OLED, uh, it's just a fancier version of an LCD TV. All that's different is just like the backlighting systems. Knowing that little bit about TV technologies, every other TV technology will make sense to you, even if the acronyms is meant to intentionally confuse you. So LCD TVs to this day are the most widely used and best-selling TV tech on the planet. Uh, the basic LCD technology is used in every kind of TV except for OLED, like I said. And whether we're talking LED TV, QLED, Mini LED TV, QNED, ULED, and so on, all of those are LCD TVs with just varying degrees of tech inside of them. And one of the greatest advantages to LCD TVs is usually just on price. On the low end, you can still get a pretty good LED LCD TV for as little as 150 bucks. Now clearly those TVs won't be like ideal if you want to get a high-end cinema experience at home. One of the biggest sacrifices you're making with getting a low-end LED LCD TV are black level details. But if you're a person who just wants a small TV in your kitchen, kids room, an expensive set to put somewhere, you're going to be fine. Uh, and current low-end LCDs have a pretty decent amount of local dimming zones now with sort of most of the smart TV features you see in higher-end options. In fact, in doing research for this, I couldn't find a single TV that was a dumb TV that didn't have some sort of smart OS behind it. But if you're looking for TVs in larger sizes, say bigger than 55 inches, it might be worth going higher up in the LCD ladder. And this is where you'd be looking at sort of QLED or ULED. Well, TV technology is obviously changing fast. Uh, what's changing even faster is wearable technology. And actually this video sponsor, Rincon, is leading that charge. Now listen, I've had a smart ring on my finger for the better part of three years. But for the past about eight days, it has been a Rincon ring. So I came into this knowing what smart wearables could do, but unfamiliar really with what Rincon was offering. And I came away 
incredibly impressed. I've been really vocal about somebody who struggles with anxiety and sleep issues. So I've worn these so I can get a better track of my own health and my sleep and sort of give myself a better chance to have a good day and sleep better. In the morning, I could log in, I could see my sleep score, I could see how I slept, I could see if I was in deep sleep or REM sleep. In real time, it's monitoring my heart rate, I'm getting stress scores, I am getting information about my body that I never had as readily available before, all from an incredibly little ring. So what I've got on my finger, I'm wearing it as a wedding band, uh, is a 24 seven like health keeper always with me. It's thin, it's light, uh, it's pretty discreet, although I like the way it looks, I don't mind if people check it out. And it's keeping track of biometrics, my own biometrics, for really 24 hours, seven days a week. And it's doing it pretty surprisingly. I mean, it's looks like a normal ring and the tech in here is a little bit of engineering wizardry. You could wear this thing for up to seven days of continuous usage without worrying about any sort of data loss. And when you do wanna charge it, you can just use the 500 milliamp hour portable charging case. That's gonna give you 18 times a full charge, which means over 150 days of battery life without ever having to plug the case in once it's fully charged. But perhaps the best thing of all about RingCon, wait for it, dramatic pause, no subscription fees. Once you buy this thing and put it on your finger, that is it. You are not paying a monthly fee to get access to all of this information. And there's a lot of reasons that you would want to use this, and the app gives you a lot of information. It fits fingers uh, of any size too. In fact, our own Courtney Hill uh, wears one as well, and he's got much larger hands than I do. So whether you've got really big hands or smaller hands, there'll be a RingCon ring that will fit you. So I think RingCon is a perfect gift for yourself. But with Father's Day around the corner, if you wanna get one for dad, you can get 15% off at checkout. But if you use my code John15, you can also get an extra $15 off. So you can get dad that, you know, number one dad mug as well. All the information that you will need will be in the description down below. So QLED or ULED still use the same LED backlight system as entry level LCDs. Except these will be a bit brighter, more colorful and have better contrast. And there's usually a wide range of prices uh, with QLED and ULED TVs. The general rule of thumb is the more expensive the QLED and ULED TVs is, deeper the blacks in the TV will produce. If that's something that's important to you, then it's worth the upgrade. Uh, when it comes for the best sort of bang for your buck, QLED and ULED TVs are where it's going to be the best for most people. And before you stop me, I don't know why I pronounce one QLED and one ULED, just how I pronounce it. But if you want the best that LCD technology has to offer, meet Mini LED. Uh, this takes the LED backlight and does exactly what it sounds like. It minis them. Uh, in the LEDs, so the backlight, there are thousands lighting up your screen. This will get you really close to OLED technology, which is still kind of the unofficial TV tech king. With mini LED, you're getting some of the brightest sets on the market, with incredibly fast response times, deep black levels, high contrast, with incredibly vibrant colors. Uh, the price can get pretty high though, depending on the model, but this is the highest quality LCD TV tech you can buy. In fact, if I put the best mini LED TV next to the best OLED TV, I would imagine it'd be hard to tell a difference in some scenarios. LCD TVs come in a wide variety of flavors and a wide range of prices and sizes, um, but they're a tried and true technology that's not going anywhere and is still continuing to evolve. But LCDs are nothing compared to a true LED TV. So probably like, John, what do you mean by true LED TV? Whole video, I've been saying that every LED TV is just an LCD TV with an LED backlight. Well, anytime you see a TV described as an LED TV, that just marketing companies or brands kind of lying to you. Again, LED TVs are just LCDs with varying sizes of those LEDs in the backlight. The only true LED TV that exists in the world are micro LED TVs. And those typically cost like 100 grand plus, some even a quarter of a million dollars. OLED TVs are kind of more of a cousin to micro LED TVs. Both use the same self-emitting LEDs, but OLED uses organic diodes. Micro LED uses non-organic. So similar technology, but like still different. And it's still wild to me that micro LED is not just the evolution of mini LED. Again, marketing terms uh, sort of intentionally making things complicated. The major perk 
to true LED TVs is next level brightness and color accuracy they can produce. And you're not having to worry about reflecting light through a series of panel layers, liquid crystal filters, quantum dot filters, you are getting just insane picture performance out of this tech. Uh, another great thing about micro LED TVs is the size is essentially unlimited. They're not like traditional, like a rectangle LCD TV that you're used to. These use smaller like screen pieces, kind of come together like a puzzle. So you can create an insane wall filling size if you have the cash to do it. You can also make weird aspect ratios too if you want. While LCD technology is certainly the most common when micro LED, the peak of LED technology, um, comes out, it'll far surpass anything that LCD can produce. When I mean comes out, I mean comes out more affordably. But it kind of boils down to this. One you could get for less than a couple hundred bucks. The other is the price of a high-end luxury car or in some cities, a house. So we took a long like route kind of explaining differences between these technologies. And I wanted to sort of have this video out as a foundation for all the other TV videos that I do. Since every TV technology is built upon this technology, LCD uh, and LED. And there are still incredible options that are affordable uh, that are using those sort of tried and true technologies that came out years ago. I don't know what TV you're looking for. I don't know what size you want or where you're gonna have it or what your budget is. But whatever TV technology you look at, hopefully now you can understand that tech that's in it, hopefully it'll help you make the better purchasing choice for your 